Joining us now with more is the man himself. He's also a medical doctor, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. You've been right about this guy from the beginning. I, I'll be f honest. I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. There were a lot of things. A lot of people got wrong in the beginning. I thought I never thought it was nefarious. But we now know on January 31st, a Dr. Fauci was told it looks like gain of function uh, manipulation of this virus, the genome of this virus. He was told that. That happens to be also the day that Donald Trump put in place the travel ban that's xenophobic and hysteria, and 10 days after the first identified case in this country. So you've been right the whole time, Senator, and unfortunately you've been right. You know, there's been no more prominent uh, scientist in favor of gain of function research than Dr. Fauci. He still hasn't backed off of that position. He believes that it's okay to take animal viruses, make them into super viruses to infect humans, even if a pandemic should occur. He says, oh, the, the research is worth it. But you know, there's a host of other scientists in this field, and they say it's not worth it at all, that we haven't learned anything. All we've done is put ourselves at risk. But even after all of this evidence points towards the Wuhan lab, this last week in committee, Dr. Fauci said that he still trusts the Chinese scientists. And the thing is, is that's a very naive notion. That's how we got here. But there are worse viruses. This is a bad one. This has about a 1% mortality. Three and a half million people have died. But they've been experimenting with some viruses that have 15% mortality. That would mean 50 million deaths right now. So this, this kind of research needs not to be funded by the U.S. taxpayer. And so I had an amendment this week that passed actually unanimously saying no more funds for this Wuhan lab. So we'll see what Dr. Fauci has to say. But he doesn't really have the judgment to be in the position he's in. Senator, I hear the money uh, that he is saying. It was far much, uh, far much more in terms of the actual dollar amount. Uh, do we have any idea how much uh, money, American taxpayer money, went to fund this Wuhan uh, virology lab and their gain of research uh, uh, function work? There's a, there, there's a lot of pools of money. There's a group called Eco Health Alliance, this Peter Zonk. He's got $100 million over the last several years. Now, not all of it's gone to Wuhan, but they say as much as three to four million may have. But there's lots of pots of money. There's defense money, there's secret money, there's money we don't even know about because it's classified. But this research is being done in the United States as well. It's very, very dangerous, and I want scientists that are not partisan to come to Washington. So I sent a letter today to the head of my committee in Homeland Security and also the Health Committee to say we need to have a hearing with impartial scientists who are, are on the other side of Dr. Fauci who believe that it's incredibly dangerous. But you know what the other danger is? I've had five death threats just for being outspoken on it. This week I've had five death threats. I don't know what the world's coming to. You can't ask honest, difficult questions that in the end have turned and proved out that Dr. Fauci was not being honest with us. But as a repercussion, my family had white powder sent to our house and five death threats phoned in. Uh, by the way, been there. Sorry to hear that. It's not fun. I know it's happened to me. It's happened to many other people in the public eye. And it's it's it gets scary at times. Uh, and I hope you're getting the proper security. And I hope our government is providing it to protect any politician, any elected official. This is not not Democrat or Republican. Let me let me ask you this. Did Dr. Fauci lie before your committee? Absolutely. He still says no money went for gain of function research. One of the papers that he sent in the emails that have come out, he labels the paper as gain of function. And that was at the Wuhan Institute. At the end of that paper, the bat scientist, Dr. Xi, she thanks Dr. Fauci's organization, the NIAID, which is part of NIH, and she actually lists the serial number for the money she got from the U.S. So he needs to be asked difficult questions. We need to have other scientists there. He hides behind the veil of, oh, I'm the only smart person in the room. No one else can understand this. But many other Ph.D. scientists in this field completely disagree with him and don't think it's worth risking a pandemic. They don't think well, we should be doing this research. And they haven't seen any benefits of it either. I, I think I recall that a gentleman by the name of Roger Stone um, 
was charged with lying to Congress, known as a process crime. You usually tell somebody, have your client report at this location at this time, and that's the way it usually was handled. Uh, but he had almost 30 guys in tactical gear, frogmen, and fake news CNN cameras, pre-dawn raid, guns drawn, for lying to Congress. Is that a crime? It absolutely is a crime. It's punishable up to five years in prison. The thing is, is no one's going to, you know, Dr. Fauci is going to work around his words. He's being very careful with his words. It sounded like he was saying no money went to NIH, but he was specifically, no money went to the Wuhan Institute, but he was being more precise and saying no gain of function money went. But I think that's verifiably false also, but it's going to come down to an opinion. He's going to say it wasn't gain of function. Many other scientists are already and have been saying for almost a year now that it all was gain of function. But he's not being uh, truthful. He's not being completely forthcoming. He's shading the meaning of truth. He's parsing this is his a, words. a real problem. Exactly. Yeah. And there's one yeah. other example. There's one other example I want to bring up. Right now, India is struggling under this. They have a billion people, 300,000 people there are getting it, and they're having about 4,000 deaths. Dr. Fauci refuses to tell people that you get immunity after you've had the disease. This would allow the vaccine in India to be targeted to those who have not been sick. But because Dr. Fauci says everyone's the same and everyone should get the vaccine without thinking about it, there's not enough vaccine to go around in India. So there are profound public health implications of Dr. Fauci denying natural immunity from the disease. In doing so, I think it's leading to a great deal of deaths around the world that could be prevented. And, and I believe you were the first senator to go public and say you had contracted COVID. You have natural immunity. You've made the choice as your own doctor not to get the vaccine in light of the natural immunity, T cell immunity, stuff I don't know about. But I think people uh, need to pay very close attention because what's happened here. And by the way, even therapeutics that were advised to Dr. Fauci, he ignored those emails. It's too long to read. But great work, Senator. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it.